Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for October 1st, 2008, episode number 89. Pod Nuts episode number 26 was posted late last night, which is probably part of the reason why I'm wearing the glasses, because my eyes hurt. <laughs> um, I got that released. Um, if you're looking for episode number 25, I still have to put it in the right-hand column of, on the podnuts.com homepage, so that'll be up tonight, too. As well as Barb's show notes um, that she wrote for that episode, that's going up right after the show. So thank you for doing that. I think it was a. F- I, I I like the show. I mean, <laughs> if you guys haven't listened to it yet, check it out. Uh, it's it's from with Nick Scrapi- Nick Screptus. That's how you say his name. That's a, you don't pronounce that e in the middle. Um, he's the creator of Super Anti Spyware. It's a great program. I've been using it a lot at the shop, and uh, I wanted to interview him because I like his program so much, and he agreed and. That's what the show is about. Okay. Dad is still on vacation, so I was in the shop today kicking some butt, by the way. And let's see. We got, I got like five machines done today. One of them was an E-Machines laptop. Don't see too many of them. It was an E-Machines laptop. And the power jack was broken. I did a power jack fix on it. Got it all back together yesterday. This was all yesterday. At the end of the day... Hit the power button. Went on for like three seconds. Turned and then it just turned off. So um, I hit the power button again. I tried to go into the BIOS. Went into the BIOS, but ran for just a few seconds and it turned off. The pattern was computer would run for between five and ten seconds and then turn off. To me, it sounds like like a, like an overheat problem. So, but I put the whole laptop back together. The fans were spinning. The heat sink was on, and it was still doing that problem. So I thought maybe the hard drive. I took all the components out. I opened up the computer again. Okay, here's what it was. And this is what usually is when, when you turn on a computer and it runs for a few seconds and it just turns off. It is an overheat problem. I didn't have the heat sink fastened on properly on this computer. So, I mean, I was in there even trying to fi- figure out what the problem was, switching out processors. And when I switched out the processor and tried it, it was doing the same. No, it was doing I switched out the processor. And I didn't put a heat sink on this time. I just put like a, a small a small heat sink just putting with hand pressure on this time. I didn't, re, I didn't put all the, the whole computer back together to test it. So I switched out the processor and I put a small heat sink on. I pushed down with my hand. Tried the, I tried it and it ran for one second instead of five seconds. So I knew the processor was the problem because the way the processor was in there, it was running for like five to ten seconds. The processor I put in there holding it by hand ran for one second. So I knew, number one, this thing needs a lot of of it needs a major heat sink and a lot of cooling because it gets hot in a split second. Second, I think I maybe did put the heat sink on correct when I took it apart yesterday, but if you ever took a, take a laptop or a computer apart, you, it's that's been running hot for a while, you could see that the thermal grease is all hardened on on the processor and on the heat sink itself. So this is the thermal grease that you put between the processor and the heat sink to to transfer heat faster or easier to the heat sink. It's all hardened out. Well, this, I think, clumped up to the point where the heat sink wasn't even touching the processor anymore when I, when I actually, when I put the, pro- the heat sink back on. So I cleaned off all the thermal grease from the heat sink and the processor, put a new coat of thermal grease on, hooked, put everything back together, screwed on the, pro- the heat sink correctly this time. I don't, see, I don't know if it was the heat sink being screwed on correctly or it was a clumping thermal grease that was the problem. Anyway, started up the computer, ran fine, so that was the problem. It was definitely an overheat problem. Got an, another HP, not another, an HP laptop, a DV6000, DV6000, yes, 14-inch HP laptop. And whenever I tried to run, it was running Windows Vista. Whenever I tried to start Vista, it would crash and reboot. Um, I finally resigned myself to just back up all his data and then just go into the system recovery and do a full system recovery from the recovery partition. In Vista, if you do uh, F8, you know how you normally go into safe mode, there's an, uh, a menu option to repair your computer. It's in the safe mode menu there. If you hit repair my, your computer, you get a certain amount of options to fix the computer, like fixing the boot up, uh, I think testing the memory, doing a system restore, um, and then there's usually, if the factory included it, uh, an option to do a factory restore on a partition, factory partition. Tried that. And when it loaded up, I was getting an error that said, load key failed with error 3. Load key failed with error 3. And I Googled that, nothing. 
nothing on it. There's some stuff about load key fail, but that's with like um, people r- making uh, BART PE discs. Anyway, um, when I decided to run, the, that was during normal boot up. When I tried to run the system recovery, the computer kept crashing. Um, so I knew the recovery partition was bad as well as the, the normal you know, data partition was bad as well. Anyway, what I ended up doing was running SpinWrite only on the recovery partition. I ran SpinWrite on the recovery partition, ran the recovery partition. It ran this time, got about half, three-quarters of the way done, and then crashed. So I ran SpinWrite again. Then it didn't even start at all. So I thought I had it with the SpinWrite on the first time, just doing SpinWrite on the recovery partition. You know, if you get that recovery partition going, rewrite the whole operating system, you're in good shape. You could create recovery disks. See, because he didn't have any recovery CDs, and that's how the computers work now. They have a uh, recovery partition, and then they coax you to make recovery disks, and they don't send you any CDs with the computer anymore, basically. Well, anyway, the recovery partition was corrupted. Therefore, no recovery CDs can be made, and it looks like we're just going to have to reinstall Vista somehow on that machine. Um, Had an HP laptop. Kept rebooting. Would get through the Windows load screen, a little ha- halfway through the Windows load screen, kept rebooting on itself. Um, no blue screen. Anyway, I just ran check disk slash R, then fix boot directly after that, and that worked fine. Fixed that machine. Did that on two machines today, by the way. Love check disk. I love check disk. I love it because it works. And, oh gosh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there was one thing I wanted to mention for the shop. Let's see what I got here. Um, let's see. Well, there was one one thing in the shop that uh, on one of the HP laptops, after I ran check this and got it working, um, and it did boot, when I went to a, a, a person's account, his account was all messed up. The colors were all messed up. Certain things were missing from the account, like my computer wasn't working. Things were just messed up on that user account. This is XP Professional, by the way, not Vista. I ran Dialafix, I ran a couple other cleanup programs, still nothing. Um, I tried to run SFC, which stands for System File Checker, SFC space space forward slash scan now from the command prompt. That didn't work. So I ended up do, what I ended up doing, and I've done this a couple times in, in the past, is I created a new account for the user. And the new account, everything was fresh, all, all the, the, the um, control panel applets, everything was in place, my computer worked. Everything was working. So if, I, if that happens, I create a new account and everything works in a new account, a lot of times I'll just take all the data out of the old account, transfer it over to the new account. That means like the My Documents folder, the uh, Favorites folder, 